Stacey Peregrine is with us. She's from Canada. She promised to bring me some uh, cheap blood pressure medication, so we'll uh, enjoy that together. And then with music from their self-titled debut album, Steel Magnolia from the Bud Light stage. Joined by Jason Bateman from the Cincinnati Bengals, uh, Dahani Jones, and comedian Hannibal Burris, and later this week, Shia LaBeouf, ne Kevin Nealon will be here, Green Bay Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers, Dave Salmoni and his terrifying animals, and we'll have music from Parachute and 311. So join us for our show. First guest tonight is one of the funniest men around with an exceptionally funny show. The show is called Louie. You can watch it Thursdays at 10.30 on FX. Please say hello to Louis C.K. <laughs> Nice How's to everything? see you. Really good. It's been a while. I haven't seen you in it a It has long time. been a long time. You're a much thinner fellow than you were before. <laughs> Don't get used to it. No? You, uh, now, you live in New York. Yes. You've got two little girls. Yeah, two kids. Do they come on uh, trips with you when you no, do this sort no. of thing? No, I would not do that to them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. No, they're at home with their mom, uh -huh. sleeping right now. Oh, they are, yeah. 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 Well, you sure. can, I mean, you know where your kids are now. Didn't used to know where you You know what I mean? Like when we were kids, yeah. did your parents know where you were? Never. No. No idea. Even that thing on the news that said, do you, it's yeah. 10 o'clock, do you know where your kids are? Nope. The answer was no. No, no idea. <laughs> now there's a kind of a custody, a chain of custody that's never broken, you know? Uh huh. Uh, you just can account for every second of your kids' lives. Yeah. Um, you go on play dates and it's an arranged thing. And they go, you drop them off, and you wait, you know, you go, they take, you take them to soccer games, and you, it's uh, empowering, yay, and then, you, you know, you take them home. <laughs> it's all very arranged. You're right, it is more. I don't, I wonder why that is. I don't, it well, is. the people that like to have, you know, uh, throw kids in the garbage and stuff like that. You know, <laughs> and, you know, hit them and break their bones. With. But anyway, <laughs> that they're not, that's not important right now. But... Because when, we were, when kids, we were kids, it wasn't like that. Oh no, those people were around. They just they they weren't on. There was no Nancy Grace. So now, you know, now, now there's somebody there to remind you of it a lot. So folks watch their kids. Move. I mean, it's not a new thing. When you were a kid, you'd just be running. You'd run around the neighborhood, right? Well, you know, uh, yeah. Like I have my kids go on play dates, and I know I have a relationship with the parents. Mm -hmm. I know who the kids are. They've been to my house. I've been to their house. I used to just, I was just a kid walking around town. <laughs> I was like eight years old, younger than my daughter, and I was just this kid, just walking around, just a dude in town. And I would go to Greg's house, my friend Greg, and my, my mother never met Greg. No idea who he is, certainly never met his dad or whoever the dude was. I don't know who it was. When I went to Greg's house, I'd, I'd knock on the door and this guy would come and he'd always wearing like, I don't know, some kind of weird top that looked a little woman-y. Uh -huh. And Haynes, he always had a, a Snoopy glass with gin in it. <laughs> and just Haynes briefs that were fighting with, you know. And then there was always a little brown spot on the front. Yes. So I was no, seven fun. years old contemplating, does this guy poop out of his penis? Like what? Those are the kind of things that I had to think about. Oh, that's Greg's dad for you. Yes. <laughs> Did you I mean, you didn't have, did you get, you were, were you a bad kid? I wasn't a bad you? kid, but I got in trouble because I just was alone and I just, you know, like I got into stealing tampons at one point. <laughs> for it was, profit? No, I didn't make a dime. I didn't make a dime. Well, I was, how did this work? <laughs> I hesitate to ask, but how did this work? No, I was eight years old, and I just went into a CVS one day because I just roamed store aisles, and uh, and I was at looking at the tampons, and I was sort of staring at them with this... I knew there was something dirty about them, but I didn't know what they were. <laughs> staring, and I picked one up. I got the gall to pick one up, and I'm looking at this box of tampons, and someone came around the corner, so I put it in my jacket. And now I have stolen them. Yeah. I, because if I take them out, that someone saw that I had them in my ja in my head. I'm like, that's it. They're in there. I can't. So I just I left and I had sweat on my face, and I just went home and I threw them under my bed. And I'm eating dinner like everybody knows. I have tampons under my bed, and so it was a terrible, stressful experience, yeah. which I then repeated every day. <laughs> Two months. What? I'd go back and I'd just do the whole cycle. I just kept doing it. 
Like a and no, I never got caught. I mean, they probably saw me, but the guy's like, I'm not confronting the kid who takes the tampons. I'll pay for him out of my check before I live that moment. I'm not asking that little pervert what he's doing with those. Yeah, there's something wrong with that boy. Something's really wrong with him. And how did it end? Well, they kept going under my bed, and I just tried not to think about him. And then one day I looked, and they were just gone. They just were gone, and my mom never said anything. She just, she must have been cleaning up, and she was like, what the f What is this? It's crazy. Wow, that's... I don't know, uh, maybe she used them for like 10 years. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, would she throw them away? I don't I, You might as well. In those days, you don't waste. Maybe I contributed to the family a little bit, you know? Maybe I kept my mom in cheap tampons for a few years. I don't know. Are your kids um, unusual like that? Or, <laughs> no, no. Are you, as the weird father, are you a, are you a weird father to them? No, or? I mean, I've tried to make up for it. But it's a little too late. Like, I think I had kids a little too late and a little too fat in life, you know? You gotta, <laughs> what do you, you mean by that? Well, you should be a young, healthy dad. Uh -huh. You should be a 26-year-old father in a tight T-shirt going, Whoa, I'm going to get you! You know, one of those guys. <laughs> That's what kids have coming. Uh -huh. And I'm not that. You don't do that. No, I take them to the park and I just run them like dogs. You got 20 minutes, I just watch them run. I stand there breathing like Tony Soprano and watching them run. And... Daddy, chase us. If someone grabs you, maybe I'll chase them. But otherwise, grow up sad. And it's just I have a lot of physical limitations that keep me from being a good dad. Like, uh, I'm always in a 48-hour window of diarrhea. That either I'll be having or have had diarrhea within 48 hours. Somewhere I'm on the timeline of my life in the diarrhea. And depending on where I am in that window dictates how far from my house I'm willing to venture. I see. How far radius. Yeah, right. You're otherwise, tethered, didn't Yeah, you? yes. Yeah. It's like having an ankle bracelet in a different kind of way. Because otherwise, I'm having diarrhea in a public restroom yeah. with my kids standing there watching me because they're little. I can't leave them out by themselves. So they're standing there. Daddy, I don't, I don't want you. Sorry, honey, you want to go to the aquarium. This is what happens. I said, let's go to the, get the newspaper and come home, but you wanted to get fancy, so you get, you get to watch me pee out of my ass for two hours. Well, it's fun with the kids. The memory is that. About it. Yeah. Do they, do they know, do they understand, like, that you're a comedian? Do they, do they real, like, they know this? Is this a concept that they're familiar with? Yeah, they, they know that daddy tells jokes, uh -huh. and uh, they don't get the business, though. You know, like they don't, they don't get who does, show really. No, you know, who I mean. does? <laughs> but like, I had a weird conversation with my nine-year-old. We were driving uh, on the highway. The six-year-old was there too, but she was just, you know, sapping resources. She wasn't really <laughs> <laughs> contributing to the conversation. <laughs> we passed by a cruise ship, and I said, "Hey, girls! The cool thing about having kids is that you get to tell them what everything is. You get yeah. to be the person that reports the whole planet to them. You're for the their first tour time. guide for their life. For life, yeah. exactly. That's a cruise ship. It's a massive boat. There's swimming pools and discos or whatever they have, you know. So uh, they got excited by the idea of a cruise ship, and I said, some comedians do shows on cruise ships. And they said, do you do that? And I was like, no. Here's the thing. <laughs> comedians have a, a mean hatred <laughs> of cruise ship comics. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a mean prejudice. We call them Bodaks. Uh -huh. It's just me, Bodak, because they pander. We just think they're, they're, they're crap. And it's just something you just feel. It's like being born racist. You just believe it. You don't question it. It's just, it's just a thing in you. You might not even know. But. Yeah. So my daughter's like, have you ever worked on a cruise ship? I'm like, no. And she says, why not? Why wouldn't you want to be on a boat? And I'm like, well... That's a different kind of comic. She says, well, how, what's the different about him? Well, a cruise ship comic just tries to please everybody. And she's like, why wouldn't you want to do that? Of course. <laughs> Isn't that what you want to do? Yes, but I see some things I say on stage might upset some people. Why would you upset people? That's a terrible <laughs> thing to do. So, you know what? There might be some clarity there. I yeah, don't know. It is. She you might, know, you might want to rethink this. I might cruise try thing. the cruise ships. Yeah. <laughs> well, well. By the way, first of all, I want to say the show is uh, is terrific. It's very thank funny. You. And I thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, we're gonna take a uh, quick break here. Okay. We'll come back and talk about Louis. Louis airs Thursday nights, ten thirty on FX. Louis CK. Can I help you? Yeah, I need uh, uh, condoms, sexual lubricant, 
Vagitine and blueberries. Lubricant out seven, Vagitine out three, next to the tampons, condoms behind the counter, ain't got no blueberries. Thank you. That's Louis C.K. Show. Louis. It's on FX every Thursday night. Louis was, by the way, I, the show is, not only is it very funny, um, but um, the, the directing is great. I know oh, you direct you. the show, too. I do, yes. It looks great. It looks like a movie out of the 70s. Thank you. That's you must perfect. be very pleased with the whole thing. I am. I love it. I really, the movie out of the 70s is perfect. That's how what I grew up loving and watching. How is the um, how, how is the second season different from the first season, is it? Yeah, I mean, we, uh, you know, I, 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 when I get bored of something, I just stop doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I didn't keep a lot of the same stuff. Like we move to a new, a new apartment, it's a whole other. But there's no scene where it happened. I just stopped being in that one and <laughs> started another one. Last year, I had one very constant character was my brother, uh, played by Bobby Kelly. He was a really funny guy, mm -hmm. and he did such a good job. And this year, I just didn't feel like it, so he's gone. He's just gone. <laughs> He's gone. I didn't kill him in an episode. He just, it's like he never existed. Well, the great thing for him is, it's in a way, like Lost, where he could possibly yes. come back. Yeah, right? he might, he, I guess. <laughs> I'd have to have a good idea. I didn't, I didn't have any ideas for him, so I just stopped this. I just, it, he's not in the reality of the show anymore, like he never was. <laughs> so now I have two sisters. Right. And one of them, and none of this reflects my life. The show's all fiction, but the, the first episode this season uh, introduces my sister yes. as this character, and it's a big introduction. And uh, it's the last thing we shot because I came up with it like right before we wrapped. So she's just gone. She just doesn't come. There's a whole thing where she comes and I love her. Gone. Never see her again. Really? Yes. And my neighbor comes and helps me and he's a really nice guy. And the last thing he says is, remember who your neighbors are. And I go, yes, I would. And he's gone too. Really? Because he's gone. It seemed like you were going to then have a, like a neighborly friendly it's relationship. Never, you'll never see him again. <laughs> no. And, and last year I had this woman play my mother and uh, she was this uh, crazy, horrible woman. It's not, my mother's a really nice person. So I just made up this terrible mother character played by this uh, Mary Louise Wilson, really funny actor. And so we did the episode. And then later in the season, I wanted to do a flashback to my real mother, who was really nice. So I did that, too. And so everybody was very confused. <laughs> These characters are so in, insanely different. And the woman who played my mother as a young woman is a woman I date in another episode. It's just a whole other person. <laughs> because she was good at both parts. So I just don't care. It's an ensemble cast. Well, every episode just has its own goal. Uh -huh. And if it messes up the goal of another episode, I don't give a I just don't care. I like that. You're very fickle and the hell with it. That's and right. you know what? If any you don't actors, like it, fire me. Yeah, that's right. It's a very Darwinist system television. No one should get too comfortable with anything. No, man. Not if the it actors stinks, I'm gone. And no. not the viewers at home. That's right. <laughs> Louis C.K., everybody. Louis, I see you